Welcome back to Real World View. In this lesson, we'll be setting up the free Visual Studio Code Editor for an optimized view development environment. We'll be learning how to get syntax highlighting in our .view files, along with how to use code snippets for a faster workflow. We'll also configure our editor to auto-format our code for us, and then we'll explore some other features for an improved development experience. While the concepts in this lesson may be transferable to other code editors, if you want to follow along exactly, you'll want to make sure you have VS Code installed. Here in VS Code, we can open up the project the Vue CLI generated for us in the previous lesson. If we open up a .view file, such as this about.view file, we see all this gray code. That's because VS Code won't automatically highlight the syntax in .view files. Vitor can fix this for us and give us other features designed to improve the developer experience. As you can see up in this message here at the top, it's already recommending that we install Vitor. But if we didn't get this message, we could search for Vitor in the extension store. As you also can see here, VS Code is recommending Vitor. So we'll click on it, install it, then click reload to reload VS Code. Now that Vitor is installed, let's take a look at some of its features. As you can see, now our code is getting proper syntax highlighting. On a Mac, by holding down Command, then pressing P, we can search for a file we want to open instead of having to use the mouse. I can just start typing HOM, and when the file is highlighted, I can hit Enter to open it up. Checking the home.view file, we can see that our JavaScript is also being highlighted correctly. Another feature Vitor comes packaged with is code snippets. These are time-saving snippets of code that allow you to quickly create commonly used chunks of code. Let's create a new component to see this in action. We'll right-click on the components directory and select new file. We'll name it eventcard.view. Now, inside that file, if we type the word scaffold and hit enter, this will autofill the file with the skeleton or scaffold of a single file.view component. Vitor also comes packaged with Emmet. This is a popular tool that allows you to use shortcuts to build out your code. For example, we can type h1 and hit enter, and this will create an opening and closing h1 tag. When we type something more complex, such as div, ul, li, it will produce a div with an unordered list in it with one list item. To learn more about how Emmet can speed up your development, you can visit their website. Now, we need to make sure we have ESLint and Prettier installed. In the extension store, we'll do a search for ESLint, then go ahead and install it. Then we'll do the same for Prettier. And then once that's installed, we'll hit reload. Now that ESLint and Prettier are installed, we need to add a bit of extra configuration to them. When we created our project, we chose to create it with dedicated config files, which gave us this .eslintrc.js file, where we can configure eslint for this project. Had we not chosen dedicated files, we would find the eslint configurations within our package JSON. So in our eslintrc.js file, we'll add plugin colon prettier slash recommended. This will enable prettier support in eslint with the default settings. Feel free to copy and paste this code from the article below this video. We also have the option to create a prettier configuration file to add some special settings according to our personal style or our team's or company's preferences. By right-clicking at the bottom of the explorer and selecting new file, we'll create it here and name it .prettierrc.js. And inside, we'll type module.exports. And in the options, we'll say single quote true. This will convert double quotes to single quotes. And we'll say semi-false. This will make sure that semicolons are not automatically inserted, and the ones that are there will be removed. Again, these are personal preferences. You can choose to set this up with whatever settings you prefer. In order to further optimize VS Code for a great development experience, we'll add some configurations to our user settings. To access our user settings, we'll go to the top navigational bar, click on Code, then Preferences, then Settings. This will bring up a user settings window where we can add settings in JSON. And again, you can copy all these settings from the article below and paste them in here. 
First, we want to make sure we have vdr.validation.template set to false. This will turn off vdr's linting feature. Instead, we'll be relying on ESLint plus Prettier. Now, we want to tell ESLint what languages we want it to validate. Vue, HTML, and JavaScript. And we'll set autofix to true on each. Then below, for good measure, we'll tell ESLint to autofix on save, and then tell our editor itself to format on save. If you're wondering what these additional settings are for, those are personal choices I've made about my editor, and they're not specific to view development or this course specifically. To test that this is all working, we'll add a data property to our event card component here, and we'll add a quote, and we'll put it in double quotes. So let's say, I want to be single, and then we'll just throw a semicolon in here to test it out. When we hit save, we can see our double quotes have been converted into single quotes, and the semicolon was removed. Now, let's take a look at some additional tools that can help speed up your development. Copy Relative Path is an extension that allows you to copy the location a file lives in based on its relation to the file to which it is linking. So we'll search for it, install it, then we'll see it in action. In our home.view file, we see there's a relative path here already, where we're importing the Hello World component. In order to get the relative path of a file we want to import, we'd right click on the file, then select Copy Relative Path. Now, when we paste what was copied, we see we have the accurate relative path. Notice this SRC. The comment here above lets us know that because of the way our project is set up, we can use at instead of SRC. A convenient feature of VS Code is its integrated terminal. We can open the terminal with the keyboard shortcut Control and Backtick. Now we can use this terminal just like we would use our normal one, and we can run tasks such as npm run serve. As you can see, it works just the same. If you're interested in installing some additional convenient code snippets, you can download a full suite of Vue VS Code snippets created by core Vue team member Sarah Drasner. Let's search for the extension with her name. Sarah.Drasner, and there it is. Now let's install it and reload VS Code. Taking a look at these snippets in action, on this H1, we can see if we type v if, that'll give us a v if statement. And typing v on will give us a full event handler. Instead of manually typing out this data property, we can simply type v data, which will create it for us. We can do the same thing to add props with v props. We can even use it to create the code that we would use to quickly import a library with vimport-lib. Please note that if you're using this snippets extension, it is recommended to add a line of configuration to your user settings. scaffold snippets should be false. This will make sure that Sarah snippets aren't conflicting with vdr's. Finally, if you're wondering how to change your theme in VS Code, or if you're wondering which one I'm using here, you can go to Code, Preferences, then Color Theme. As you can see, I'm using Flat UI Dark. You can change your theme color to any of these options here, but you might not see Flat UI Dark because you don't have it installed. To install it as an extension or pick a different theme, you can go over to the Extension Store, search for one, and install it from here. If you don't see one you want, or you're looking for even more extensions, you can head over to the Visual Studio Marketplace online. Here, you can preview tons of different plugins and themes, such as Night Owl by our friend Sarah Drasner. You can install it directly from the browser, then find it in your color theme preferences. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a single file.view component, the building block of a view application.